Hello there, welcome back to you 4 and uh, well, France, better than Napoleon, hopefully. Uh, last time we uh, concluded our war with uh, England, part of the Scandinavian War, and as a result of that we ended up basically taking everything but apparently one of the provinces in the New World, so that looks good. England is now down to two mainland Euro provinces, which is uh, also good, and uh, well, Scandinavia is more or less singing on the last verse, if you will, because we are basically completely and utterly running over them. Uh, I'm just wondering... Nothing cost of money power here. Well, that's going to be interesting. Uh, let's take this, 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 and this. Is that all we have claims to? Yes, that is. So we'll be taking those promises. And uh, as I see, people are getting pissed with me, but I think that even though it says that some people will be considering joining a coalition against me, I'm very much certain that will not be the case. I don't really see it happening. So we'll be taking this and then we can then fabricate claims on the rest of Scandinavia, I think, more or less. Uh, we can't claim on Zlesvig, so we'll have to fight two more wars against Scandinavia and then they'll be done, finished, and then we can all laugh all the way to the bank. Uh, I will be taking this though before uh, before uh, upgrading to, well, tech that gives me less cost for, uh, well, creating cores, if you will. So it should be fine even so. We'll be going for this deal, it seems to be pretty pretty solid and there we go we take in a lot of land uh, do I need the fortress in uh, in Stockholm is a big question now I don't think so it's a uh, it's a star fort so they're expensive but I don't think I need it um, let's see here Turn so let's just go ahead and multiple all the forts multiple all of them there we go do I want to keep this one up for the time being I don't think I need to that's a bad that's the funny part about those but what we are going to do is activate the force in uh, the Russian border because we're going to fight Russia now. And I'm going to be moving the troops in Scandinavia, of course, over to Russia with uh, with that. But yeah, this should make it a lot easier to deal with, uh, well, some of the Russians. And these troops here are going to be moved over. I don't really need as many forts as uh, I have here. I'll keep the one in Skorna because it's basically going to be potentially useful and uh, we'll keep these guys here as basically a uh, peacekeeping force the rest one the rest of them are going to be moved to to russia here and the goal is basically to set up uh, our forces here for a quick strike on the russian force that is currently hiding in uh, well perm the uh, the russian ukrainian forces which is well kind of bad uh, but anyways we're also going to be preparing for a war here against uh, Austria Austria's allies are currently Aachen, Maidbo, Nassau, Naples and Flanders so as you can imagine here they don't really have any powerful allies they have a lot of weak ones so uh, potentially if finishing Hungary for instance uh, I think I'll just keep the Bohemian Alliance they actually work pretty well finishing Hungary and Croatia as well as taking Vien will be the goal of the next war against uh, Austria I might not be able to take Vienna, to be perfectly honest, but I should be perfectly fine with that. If I can complete uh, Austria, I can fabricate a claim on it and the border in the next war. So I wouldn't be worried too much. We do, uh, however, have the worrisome prospect of Brandenburg to deal with. Brandenburg, it could definitely become a very, very annoying foe if you want to. Bohemia, Brandenburg, and Sherven. Lithuania is actually allied with Sherven, this tiny little state over here, so that's interesting. Uh, Brandenburg's allies are Lithuania and Flanders, so in t uh, fighting Brandenburg will basically just be fine Lithuania. So if I can drag, of course, Poland and Bohemia into it, then I should be fine. Let's see, country size or military size of the armies here, total. I2 and 90,000, we have the Ottomans with 90. Uh, Lithuania has 63,000. Poland has the same, but they're out of manpower. So again here, we are... Definitely the number one right now, so I can't complain about that. I'm also, as I said, very tempted to fight Milan, if I can. I'm very tempted to just go after Naples, for instance, but uh, the reason why I'm fine to fight Milan is more or less just to take these provinces here, so I can, well, connect my lands, hand over to Genoa. Uh, the Pope, of course, is also tied because of that, so we'll have to see. We might do a very quick war against the Pope before we attack Austria, but uh, that's still under consideration. And also, in terms of that, I should probably go ahead here and see if I can... Uh, if I can uh, actually get Milan in alliance here before our next war against Austria. 
because that would be hilariously good if I can call Milan and use their mountain fortresses to uh, to keep everything in check. So uh, definitely seems to be interesting either way. But for now, as I said, we'll wait for our troops to move into position and then we'll declare war on Russia. Well, I didn't consider the fact that the Danes have the plus 50% coring costs to uh, their lands, which means I'm not only overextended, but I'm also in dire trouble because I didn't consider the repercussions of actually taking this much land at once. Uh, I might just have to do a little bit of a uh, interesting here, just create Denmark. And to be perfectly honest, that seems actually very tempting right now because Denmark does have that plus 50%. And I can just use Denmark here to conquer the rest of, uh, of uh, well, Scandinavia. So I think we are going to actually create Denmark here. I'm going to be one nation above the limit, or one nation above the limit. But in terms of diplomatic power, that should be perfectly fine. I'll be able to, uh, to live with that. So we'll create Denmark here just so that I won't end up creating a incredibly big and terrifying problem for myself in terms of both coring costs but secondly a potential monster here that will be uh, the uh, overextension that I did not consider when I went for uh, making peace with uh, with Scandinavia but uh, let's just make it perfectly clear Scandinavia's cores are now all Danish provinces so I can just hand everything over to Denmark in the well future wars so again it's not really any concern I could potentially support rebels here, unfortunately just peasants. So I'm very tempted to see if I can put myself into a position where I could, for instance, uh, well, make some other interesting moves. But for now, as I said, we'll wait until Russia's ready, and then we'll declare one Russia. We have our troops ready now, sadly, uh, the game jumped, sorry. I have my troops here now ready in uh, the Russian province, and we're about to actually invade here. They don't have any allies, so uh, this should go very quickly, we're painless. So we're just going to go for taking perm, because there's no cars in the area, it's far out of the way, it should be easy pickings, in theory. So let's just go ahead and declare war, take perm. Uh, Russia's army is not too big, as you can see here, it consists about... Uh, 50 or 6,000 troops, we have a lot of them in our sights here, so it should not be a problem just marching in there and getting rid of them. Should be very, very simple and straightforward. Uh, currently, I'm working on... Oh, damn, that went quick. Uh, yes, as I said, simple and straightforward, although I did not expect it to be that simple and straightforward. Anyways, Russia has a lot of fortresses, as you can see, but uh, we did actually destroy both of their armies. Both of their armies have already been destroyed so far and that leaves them with just 8,000 men left. So it's basically now just using fortresses, uh, making sure that they don't get an opportunity to, ca to counter attack and basically just allow the war to, to run its own course here. Um, Gibraltar and Salento demanding representation. Um, so they want us to switch to a constitutional monarchy? I guess. I don't know. We'll have to deal with that later. Uh, we could move to Court of Versailles as soon as we get the econ economic ideas if we want to. Don't really need to. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Go to India. Could be interesting. I think we'll make vague provinces, make vague promises of the reform, and we'll see if uh, anything. Well, if they get pissed about that. I'll still be working on actually making Milan my ally before the Austrian War. It could definitely be helpful to have on my side. Uh, Poland's actually feeling threatened towards me here, so I'm currently working on improving my relations with them. Uh, we do have, still have the alliance, we do still have the royal ties, but even so, they still have a lot of aggressive expansion towards me. So we'll have to see how we want to deal with that. Uh, we are going to most likely here end up with uh, a double whammy, if you will. And what I mean with that is that we are most likely just going to go ahead and declare war on Austria. Take as much as we can from Austria, just siege everything. And then just straight out declare war on Brandenburg right afterwards. And basically what the goal here will be is... Uh, uh, basically what the goal here will be is to take Berlin. Or just even get a... Uh, even just get a... Well, beachhead if you will in Gravesfald. Potentially just like in Fabrica claim on Berlin. But I think with the uh, development just being 18, I'll just go for Gravesfald and then Berlin and potentially something else that just makes the map look a little bit prettier. But that will basically make me get Berlin very quickly, I can then get Vienna very quickly, I can then get, as you know, Moscow very quickly, getting the achievement done. But as I said, I think I want to play this game a little bit longer 
than I'm being used to, potentially just finish a game for once. And as I said, the reason for that is very, very simple. I need to uh, get used to playing the late game. Most of my games tend to end around this time. This is mostly a little along the line of the longest I've played, usually. And of course, we need to we need to fix that. Azex, people are pissed on Azex apparently, so why don't we just increase that one? But uh, I think I can start actually re uh, getting rid of the Protestant provinces now, because as you can see, the uh, the senses of reformation have vanished, so that is uh, a positive one. So uh, with that, of course, we're going to be uh, changing things up a tiny bit. It seems that the Russians already set up another big force here, so I'll deal with that. Kazan has popularization of silk fabrics, so, uh, well, the silk lot is uh, getting more and more uh, interesting. And boom, there we go, a Treaty of Tordesillas on Colonia Luciana. And French Louisiana has been uh, created now, which is uh, good. So a lot of uh, a lot of French here, but uh, as I said, I'll be focusing on just getting the coast done, and then we'll leave everything in the hands of well, the colonies themselves. So I'll be moving these guys to actually keep that one under control, and then I think we'll just finish the islands. We'll well bridge the gaps here in South America and just work from there. I find it hilarious that still Holland is just this tiny little island. They haven't actually done anything on that island, not colonized anything. They're just sitting there. So uh, it's it's interesting for sure. And I'm very tempted to actually take the one Utrecht and get just get those <laughs> Holland course back just to see what would happen. Just out of curiosity, if you will. So what we're going to do now is just keep an eye on the Russian war. We're going to be sieging the uh, fortresses here and uh, we'll see how things go. Of course, again, imperialism and nationalism on uh, my brethren, because uh, what's what's better than what's better than that? Uh, but yeah, we'll just f uh, continue fighting here, and I'm pretty sure we should be able to uh, get things done. I should probably build a fortress here in uh, in the area, since they are actually occupying some territory, but it should be fine. Uh, if we end up in a battle, I'll show you. Other than that, I'll just sit back and relax here, and we'll see what happens. We have a same proclaim, which gives us a uh, free stability point. We're now up a plus three, which is the maximum, which is very, very good. Um, I'm a little bit unsure what to do. We still have the English separatists. We have the Swedish uh, separatists as well. But the course are almost done, which means that uh, the problem should solve itself very, very soon. Peskov has been sieged, which allows us to move our troops back here. And I'm actually just going to move these troops too, and we're going to... Uh, well, have a mash here on uh, the Russian army, hopefully destroying it. Uh, but basically what this means is that I can now siege some uh, some land. So it should be interesting to see just how that works. They will arrive in the 8th, so let's wait just 6 more days. That was 4, yep. There we go. 6 more days have been waited, and we'll go ahead here and uh, send our troops here to hopefully mash the, uh, the Russians here. And boom, stack wipe. So it seems like the Russians are actually just one tech behind, but again, they're orthodox, so I guess that makes up for the difference in, uh, in ability, if you will. But uh, for now, I'll just siege the line that we can here now, with the fortresses down, and uh, I'll just keep on doing that, and we'll see here if we can get what we want from the Russians. Technically, the war is already won, but I still need to siege at least this fortress, and this fortress, and potentially these two as well, to actually get everything that I want here. So uh, we'll just keep on doing uh, said thing, and uh, we'll see how this uh, turns out. The war with Russia is going very, very well, as you can see here, but I think we're actually going to go for diplomatic as our idea set here, because I, in this latest game, I definitely feel like I need that extra diplomat. Not only that, but the diplomatic relations, the diplomatic reputation, everything here is going to actually be helpful in terms of just keeping everything going right now, so I think actually diplomatic ideas isn't that bad of an idea. And to make the matter even, well, worse, diplomat for once I'm actually ahead in diplomatic tech. It's the one tech that I'm currently doing the best in. So just taking these two first ideas should be very alright, very okay. Getting an extra diplomat, very good. And getting that extra relation too, because uh, currently uh, Milan didn't actually want to ally me on the basis of, uh, as you can see here, I have too many diplomatic relations. So, uh, that is a little bit too bad, but potentially yeah, that modifier might actually vanish here as soon as, uh, as soon as the day is done, if you will. But uh, I think I have everything I need now to actually make peace on Russia, so uh, what do we have actually claims to? This and this. 
84 uh, overextension. Huh. I don't think I want to take fast cover, but I think we want to take the line here. Just keep on going closer. And I'm very tempted to take the too, just as an extra bonus, but I think I'll leave that. I forgot to fabric the claim, which is bad. But uh, again, this should make it a little bit easier to deal with Russia in the future. And I think this should be a fairly all right deal in terms of uh, a war score. I could potentially also force to release some, some nations. But I think we'll just stick with this. It should, uh, it should work. So let's just go ahead here and make peace. And uh, with that, we have once again grown. Let's just core everything here quickly. And I think we are, as I said, not going to take any more uh, land for a little while. And that's because I need uh, basically money here to tech up again. And with this, I can get rid of this castle right here. And we can also get rid of this castle right here. Because there is one in Yaroslav, there is one over here. I should potentially build one here, I think, or next to. Because there's currently a bug that if you have two basically connecting like this, you wouldn't be able as a player to walk through this, but the AI can. So basically you want basically have two spaces between each fault. So they all have, uh, basically the full zone of control is everything it touches. But if two f fortresses zone of control overlaps, the AI can just ignore that and walk straight through, which is very annoying. So that's basically why I would wish this fort to be here, because then you basically have the correct amount of spaces. So I think I might have to move this one, but uh, we'll figure that out as we go. For now, however, we're going to uh, go ahead here and uh, multiple all forts because there's no reason to have them up anymore. And we're going to be moving these two troops here back to uh, Scandinavia to prepare for a potential air war against Brandenburg, but also, of course, the Pope. The Pope has uh, probably reached the end of his reign, I dare say. And uh, what I mean by that is very, very simple. I'm going to uh, declare war on the Pope next time, I think. We're going to try and take uh, as many provinces as possible. Most likely just Siena, Umbria, and uh, Urbino, as well as Istria and Dalmatia. And then we're going to declare war on Austria here, with the goal of uh, basically, well, finishing Croatia, so I can annex them. Trying to finish uh, Austria. Sorry, Hungary. So I can actually just save some admin points and not having to core anything myself. But we'll see what we do next time. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment, praise, criticism, anything you feel like. And I'll see you next time. Bye.